Andrew, they're like stiff and freezing, but I can feel that there's still life in them. They're so cold. Well, we can't feed them anything until they're warm. They're f like frozen stiff right now. Hey, let's get you warm. They're frozen. But they're moving. This one's moving. This one's doing worse, but alive, wow. but barely. I didn't realize it was, I mean, when you said like newborn, like they're literally like mm -hmm. just yeah. born. Little heads still wet from birth. And this one's literally like her ears are still stuck. I had gotten this. I gotta get you through this. They're still so, it's like they're How just did you core. Do you do this? Their core temperature is just so cold. Could get them in the incubator. We should get them in the incubator. That's exactly for situations like this. Is your little body gonna start working? That would be real nice if your little body wanted to start working. All black except her little tail tip mm -hmm. is white. Mm -hmm. That's too cute. We gotta make you live because you're gonna be so cute. We just had a blizzard and it's absolutely freezing outside. I get a call about a woman who has an art studio a few blocks away, and she is frantic. She feeds community cats, and sometimes they come into her art studio. But today, a young cat has come into her art studio, given birth underneath an oil painting, and left behind two newborn kittens still wet from birth. Look, the little ear popped up finally. Welcome to the world. They're filthy from birth. You're alive! There's movement in there. I'm like, can they even breathe with all this afterbirth on them? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, because when you care for orphans, you have to do everything the mom does, but usually she at least cleans them after they're born. <laughs> the sack, I've seen cats give birth like three times already. Yeah, like, that's why. They don't leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She just ran away. She just ran away. I think sometimes they get scared. Are you guys starting to warm up a little bit? I think so. Your little head is so cold. They stink. Yeah, I know that. They stink. They smell like fruit, right? Yeah, they smell... They smell like raw meat. Like they mm -hmm. were not cleaned up. They smell like uh, period. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah. They smell There's like blood. There's actually a medical term for that that my friend Cass It smells like a tampon. It's a smell out of the Yeah. Your names will be Tampax and Pearl. Yeah. Well, you got to think right after birth, what a mom cat does is she licks them all they, lot. They, they them. And these guys were not cleaned at all. Shut so a ship on all of it. They're... <laughs> Look at them. Yeah, they're moving. It'll be up and running in no time. Look at that. Yeah, squirming. Oh You're squirming! Very cool. I remember. Oh, hi, look at you. You got a little life in there. Totally. I think they're like almost to the point where maybe we could feed them soon. Both kittens are in horrible shape. Still wet from birth, they are stiff little icicles who had never gotten a single drop of their mother's milk. It's not safe to feed a newborn kitten until they are warmed up and even then, you have to do so, so carefully, one drop at a time. One tiny drop. Does your body understand that or not really? If no, we're gonna wait. Do you understand this or not really? She's like actually almost trying. But not. Well. well, the back end is working all right, so we need the front end to start working. But that's a good sign, things are moving. Yeah. Come on, little one. Hi. How are we living? So, we have a little kitty in here, we call her Itty Bitty. She was meowing in a, she was very 
very vocal today, like the most she's ever been. And um, I lift up uh, one of my mom's paintings and I saw these two guys. And you didn't even know she was pregnant. She's small to begin with, so I don't know. I didn't know if it was from the food or what it was. Like I just got here, so I didn't know. And then um, she was ex very vocal. The mom ran away. The mom was gone. The mom jumped ship. He's mm -hmm. spunky. Look at how yeah. spunky you are. I like his little spirit. He's good. This one I'm a little that more worried about, but I'm surprised this one is even alive. So it's interesting to see all the different places that people find kittens. <laughs> An artist loft is new. We get back to the house and I put them in the incubator. This thing is perfect for tiny newborns. The incubator stays at a temperature of about 90 degrees and a humidity of around 40. So this is our incubator. This is an ICU unit. It has controls for temperature and humidity. So we had to run to the store to get distilled water. And so we had to get tubing for an aquarium that goes down into distilled water. And that is how you keep the humidity moving around or one moment. No, feels good in there. It's so hard for me to believe that people don't know to keep kittens warm, but I guess that's because I do this all the time. <laughs> Hi. Hi, little beans. So these guys really do not weigh much. This one is 91 grams. 91 grams. And this is the really little one. She is 71. 72. I like hearing your little voice. 71 grams is so tiny. I mean, they look so different than when we got there. They were freezing cold, still wet from birth practically lifeless. And now, they are moving around a little bit. I'm worried about this one, she's so little. But she's hanging in there. Good job, guys. I love seeing them wiggle around, oh. Okay, so what I have here is formula that is very diluted with Pedialyte and it also has Benabac in it. So this is a very, very diluted formula. This is really their first time eating. For a newborn kitten that is first eating, you don't want to give them full strength formula. Hi, are you gonna eat? It would make me so happy if you would eat. I'll be very patient with you. Right now my goal is to get them to eat just one cc per meal. Just a very, very little bit to keep their blood sugar up and to keep them hydrated. To get their stomachs acquainted with drinking formula. Syringe feeding is really, really dangerous when you're working with a kitten this little. They don't have a gag reflex at all. So you cannot just shove formula down their throat. You really need to make sure they're swallowing. Which means this could take a really long time because it's one tiny drop at a time.
The kittens are preemies and they're not able to get a full belly worth of food safely via syringe. So I have to switch to tube feeding. 5 a.m. Tube feeding is a skill that absolutely must be learned hands-on at a veterinarian's office. It's where you put the food directly into the kitten's belly by injecting it through a skinny tube. This is a more advanced skill, so please do not do this at home without training. You must learn how to safely place the tube from a vet. Once you're trained to do this, it can be the best way to help these kittens who are very young or very sick or unable to swallow food on their own. People think working with kittens is so cute, and a lot of the time it is. But the reality is that rescue is not about cuteness. There's nothing cute about being born in the freezing cold under an oil painting to a cat who's still a kitten herself. There's nothing cute about being born prematurely, being orphaned, or being sick. This is preventable suffering, and it is preventable through spay and neuter. We have to be spaying and neutering not just our pet cats, but also the cats who live outside, who share our streets and our community. Community cats create 80% of the new kittens born every year. We have got to be sterilizing the cats who are outside. Holding these vulnerable infants in my hand, I sometimes wonder if people truly grasp the gravity of not spaying and neutering. By her second day of life, Mink lost her battle. She was premature, she had congenital defects, and she was not viable, no matter how hard we tried. I sat there crying, so angry for Mink, and so devastated for Mink, and for all the other kittens who are born outside and who suffer or die on the streets or in animal shelters who are not able to care for newborns. Everyone deals with grief differently. My personal way of dealing with the sorrow of losing a kitten is to try to take action. I try to learn as much as I can, I try to teach others, and I try to inspire others to get involved. So in Mink's Otter, I am begging people to step up and be part of the solution. In this way, Mink's tiny two-day life can still have a mighty impact. And people are already stepping up and doing this. Within one day, I was getting message after message of people saying they'd rescued a kitten in Mink's honor, even naming the kittens after Mink. They'd signed up to Foster or to TNR. This stuff means so much to me. One of my friends was even able to go and trap the mama cat and get her spayed so she won't be giving birth under any more oil paintings. This is why rescue work and TNR is so important. We have to do better for these cats and kittens. It's Badger's one week birthday today and I'm so happy for him. Even if I'm a little sleepy from having to wake up in the middle of the night, it is all worth it for this little guy who is nursing on my finger at the moment. We'll get you a bottle. You don't have to nurse on my thumb. I hope if you're watching this and you feel touched by this story, you take action, you get out there, and you do something for cats. Volunteer at your local shelter. Get your cat spayed and neutered. Get out there on the street and trap community cats and get them sterilized. Foster kittens. Don't just be a cat lover, be a cat advocate. There are so many ways to help, and when we all work together, we can make such a huge difference. Badger boy, let's get you fed.